Just weeks ago, I told you that Iowa would land a center in the transfer portal. Now, at the time, I did not expect that center to be former Hawkeye Josh Agundale, who has now returned to school. But it appears that perhaps Agundale is the only guy that Iowa will land at that position in the portal. We'll get to that in a moment. A reminder, though, to first, please subscribe if you have not already done so. About 50% or so of our listeners, of our watchers, are not actually subscribed. So please help the channel out. If you're enjoying Hawkeye content, I can't do this without the support of all of you. And certainly it helps to be subscribed, turn notifications on. I want to also thank our sponsor for this show, Under the Kitchen, Randy Engel, doing tremendous work down there in Mitchellville. Great artwork of former Iowa players and coaches, current players. Uh, so check them out on Facebook, Under the Kitchen on Facebook. But yes, Iowa fans concerned right now because it seems as if Iowa has kind of lost any momentum it had in the transfer portal. A lot of fans angry at, at Fran McCaffrey. Um, I, I see them on social media. I, I really hate social media for the record. Um, but doing this show, I, you kind of have to have social media. So I see some of the comments. Um, look, I, I've been very defensive of, of Fran McCaffrey and all this. Uh, we all know that Iowa has been behind the game in the NIL talk. Um, I, I don't care what Gary Barta has to say. I heard Gary make a statement here um, to the media here earlier this week that he does not believe they're, they're behind with NIL collectives. And they're basically waiting for the NCAA to come down lay the hammer down on some of, these, some of these other schools for recruiting with NIL. And look, you know, you get the Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher uh, back and forth earlier today. If you haven't read that story, check it out. Uh, I, I think the bottom line is right now you have conflicting viewpoints on NIL. And I've said this all along. You can, ha- you can view it from both directions. You can look say, look, I don't like how schools are using NIL to recruit um technically that's not what it was instituted to do that was not what the purpose of nil was um but then on the other hand there really are no ramifications for having boosters be able to entice kids to come play for your school iowa has been behind the game in the collective which i know nick saban was talking about the collectives and how those are even a problem iowa doesn't even have a a collective in place and Gary Barta made a comment earlier this week that, well, we'll get one in place and we're not behind. Well, here we are May 19th, and most of these guys are already gobbled up, all right? And Iowa hasn't even been able to get a big man on campus that I'm aware of. So, listen, I, I, I'm, you, you know how I feel about the Gary Barta situation. I would caution you to not believe a word that comes out of his mouth as it relates to NIL and transfer portal content, all right? Because he's proven time and time again to not know what's going on. All right. He, he really doesn't understand what's going on. And it's unfortunate because Iowa deserves better. Fran McCaffrey deserves better. I, look, Fran wants to play by the rules. I'm, I'm not going to debate that. And perhaps, you know, I'm not saying that Gary Barta has an ulterior motive, but at some point you have to adapt. Fran McCaffrey made that statement a couple of weeks ago. You have to be able to adapt. And right now, even if you want to play within the tighter confines of what you believe to be moral and ethically, morally and ethically right, even if you want to do that, I was not prepared. They don't even have this collective ready to go. Okay, so it's ridiculous. But the bottom line is, will Iowa get a a big man in the transfer portal other than Josh Agundale? And technically, he's a big man and he came from the transfer portal. Right. The answer to that question is, I don't know. I'm not quite sure at this point. Honestly, I'm beginning to doubt. Um, and yeah, you, you can, you know, put all the blame on Fran McCaffrey if you want. I'm not going to do that because I do believe Fran has recruited his tail off, trying to get guys like Fardaz Amak here, um, Theo Akuba, uh, even Trey Mitchell. We know Trey Mitchell is now headed to West Virginia. Akuba headed to Ole Miss. Amak headed to Texas Tech. And how about the fourth guy that we had talked about on this show, Oshun Oshuni E. He's headed to Iowa State. So apparently Iowa State, I know they have, uh, Iowa State was able to land another St. Bonaventure uh, forward. Holmes is headed to the Cyclones. So that's an advantage for Iowa State. But Iowa wasn't even able to get a Shini on campus that I'm aware of. So, yeah, you can blame Fran, but the bottom line is these kids want some sort of a guarantee. And, you know, whether you're using NIL to recruit or 
you're basically able to just say, look, we've got NIL deals waiting here for you. I don't believe that Iowa has any of this in place right now. And so, yeah, it's probably not going to happen. Iowa is likely not to get a transfer portal center until a collective is in place at the minimum. And it's unfortunate. I've brought this up before, but Fran McCaffrey is a trooper for sticking it out here. Okay. There are plenty of schools across the country that would like Fran McCaffrey as their head coach. And there are plenty of other schools that are willing to adapt while still maintaining the moral and ethical side of things. There are plenty of other schools that are willing to adapt and are quicker at adapting. And I hope Iowa can hold on to Fran McCaffrey because I do have belief in him as a recruiter, as a coach, as a human being. But he, he's working behind the eight ball right now. All right, He's working with a hand tied behind his back. And I, I do feel bad for him. With that being said, Iowa was still active in the portal. There were reports that uh, Iowa was linked to Keon Brooks at Kentucky, former five-star kid who visited Iowa at a high school, likely not going to come here. Um, he's likely headed to the NBA. That has not been made official. We know in a couple of weeks we'll get all those um, early entries. They'll make their decisions on if they want to stay in the draft or return to school. We talked to Courtney Eldridge this week. Uh, Courtney made it a point of saying, look, they're not done in the transfer portal. They will continue to evaluate things. And once you get some decisions from these kids, a lot of these kids will go portaling. That's just the way it is now. Kenneth Lofton Jr., the kid from Louisiana Tech, he's likely headed to the NBA. Felipe Hase, kid from Mercer. You know, maybe Iowa looks at him. I don't think he's an I don't think he's a Big Ten center. To me, he's very much like Philip Rebracha. And I like Philip Rebracha. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think you want to ride Philip Rebracha as your starting five all season next year. Kind of like they did this year, and they got away with it much of the year. But they 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 really want a big guy. And Felipe Hase is, you know, a, a six foot nine. He can shoot maybe a bit better than than uh, Philip Rebracha. But uh, there are some guys. We'll continue to monitor it. Again, I wouldn't get anybody's hopes up on the Keon Brooks situation. Uh, and he's not a true big anyways, but certainly you take him if you can get him. But let's just wait and see what happens at that June deadline. I, I think Iowa will get someone. I don't know that it'll be a, C a center. Um, obviously, the biggest guy you want to get back is Chris Murray. Now, Chris Murray's going to do what's in his best interest. I do believe he's coming back, but we'll have to wait and see. He turned down an invite to the Combine, which would tell you he, he's either one coming back or two, he's got a guarantee somewhere. So I would guess he's coming back. Iowa, I will say this, if you had asked me a couple, a couple months ago if I had confidence in Iowa next season without a big man in the portal, I would have said no. But here's the deal. They did get Josh again to lay back, which you can say that's a positive or a negative if you, if you want. I think it's a positive. I think there's reason to believe that Fran and company would not have taken Josh again to lay back had they not believed that he will take that next step, Riley Mulvey will be a year older. Okay. He'll get another year of development. He's a seven footer. Okay. So they got two guys there that can play the five plus Philip Rebracha, who has played the five. I know it's not ideal. Here's the other thing. And I'm a big Dallas Mavericks fan. I've watched a lot of Dallas Mavs basketball here in April and May. And Dallas has been able to win. I know it's the NBA, but Dallas has been able to get it done without a true center. They don't have a true center besides Boban Marjanovic, who doesn't play. They ride with Dwight Powell and Maxi Kleba, and they win games because they have elite three-point shooting. They have really good ball handlers. I was going to have really good ball handlers with Eulis, with Asante Bowen, Connor McCaffrey, Tony Perkins. Those, those guys are going to be exceptional ball handlers. The question is, do they have enough shooting? Do they have the shooters to be able to emulate what a Jason Kidd is doing at Dallas? That's the key. I think you can get away with playing Philip Rebracha at the five but he's got to be able to stretch the floor a bit more. You're going to have to get three-point shots out of an Aaron Euless, out of a Tony Perkins. Obviously, Peyton Sanford and Patrick McCaffrey are, are back. That's huge. Uh, Chris Murray coming back is monstrous. If he leaves, it is, I don't want to say panic time, but boy, you really need to get somebody in the portal at that point. They need three-point shooters. So you hope that Tony Perkins can shoot the ball better. You hope that DeSante Bowen can come in and shoot. I, I've heard people talk about J Josh Dix, true freshman from Council Bluffs. He's coming off a compound fracture in his leg would he be able to give them a couple threes a game maybe at some point those are a lot of ifs you look at dallas they've got uh bullock who shoots they've got dorian finney smith who shoots tim hardaway jr is hurt right now he's one of the best shooters in the nba you got jalen brunson luka Doncic. i mean just go to maxi kleba you go down the list everybody spencer dinwiddie everybody can shoot that's not the luxury that fran mccaffrey has and that's why iowa is going to struggle playing small ball they can't get a big man all right 
They can't get a big man. They don't get maybe a three point shooter. And I've been an advocate for that. I know they're hard to come by. You get an elite three point shooter in the in the uh, portal that can change things as well. So we'll wait and see. The Chris Murray situation is imminent. We'll get that in the next couple of weeks. We'll hear hopefully very soon about how Josh Dix's recovery is is going, and that's huge. And I think we're going to get some transfer portal news. I wouldn't guarantee it, and I don't know if it'll be at the center position. Appreciate everybody hanging out here for a few minutes. Apologize that I sound a bit nasally and a bit congested. I am fighting a, a cold. Uh, so appreciate everybody, though. As always, thank you again to Randy Engel at Under the Kitchen. Check his work out on Facebook, and I will talk to you soon.